Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this bouncy text effect in Adobe After Effects. And this was actually requested by someone called Foo Vector, or at least that's the name of their channel. And they got the inspiration from a great artist called Austin Sailor. So the link that they gave me was to this animation. Basically the animation is an R that has a bit of a bounce to it. So as you can see at the moment, it's displaying on the screen. And we're going to be trying to replicate that kind of effect, that kind of bouncy effect. If you haven't seen Austin's work before, um, definitely go check him out. I'm going to put a link in the description. And yeah, let's get on with the video. So I've just taken the R from my new logo and we're going to first of all come up and we're going to make a new composition. So I'm going to come in, I'm just going to make it 10 seconds long, 1080 by 1080. And if you haven't seen my first video on how to animate your hand lettering, I would definitely go and check that out because we are going to be using the same technique that we use in that video to animate our letter. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is go file, import, file. And what I've actually done is I've laid out all the layers for this R. So each part of the R is a different layer. And we're going to need to do this in order to make the animation run smoothly. So the first thing we're going to want to do is select our file, come down to options and import as and change from footage to composition retain layer sizes. Now what that's going to do is just make sure that all the layers are the same size as they are in Adobe Illustrator. So yeah, I'm just going to bring that in and it's going to create a new composition. I've got it twice because I've already imported it in from earlier. And I'm just going to double click that composition and we have three layers, but they're invisible. So the first thing we're going to want to do is highlight all these layers, right click and create shapes from vector layer. Once we've done that, we are going to get rid of our Adobe Illustrator files and select these and just come up to fill and change it to white or whatever color you would like. So now we've got that, I'm going to run through the steps that I do in the first video. So what I'm going to do is just link that, put that on the screen. So yeah, go check that out real quick and then come back when you've watched it and we can continue with the video. Okay, so I've just finished doing all the stroke effects for this letter and hopefully you've watched that video and you're at the same point that I am right now. So now that we've got the basic animation for it down, we want to add that bouncy effect. So what we're actually going to do now is use a tool called the Puppet Pin Tool. Now this can be found at the top of your toolbar. It's this little pin here and we're just going to left click and hold and make sure we have the Puppet Pin Tool. Now what this basically allows us to do is add points to our letter and it will use these points as pins to kind of pull apart the letter and we can then give it some bouncing effect. So if I just add two points at the top and the bottom of this layer and what I'm actually going to do is come down to the layers palette and just press that little dot next to the lock button and what that's going to do is only show this layer. So now we don't have to worry about all the others getting in the way. So we've got two pins on this layer. And what we can actually do now is click and drag at each pin and this is actually going to move the layer around. So we're going to use these pins to animate that bouncy effect. So how I'm imagining it is it comes down and then just before it stops it's going to keep going a bit further and then spring back into place. So if we just animate that, so what we're going to want to do is select the layer, press the drop down arrow to the left, press effects, press puppet, press mesh, press deform and then we have our two puppet pins so I'm just going to open those up as well. Now as you can see it's already set a keyframe for these and there we go that's a starting point for them so that's where the position is going to move from so we've got a keyframe and then I'm going to move forward a few frames and select puppet one and just move it down and it actually creates like a little path in between where it's going to move from and where it's going to move to. So if we just play this back now instead of coming to an abrupt halt it just kind of carries through just a little bit and then what we're now going to want to do is just go forward a few more frames and we're going to click on that first frame press command c or control c if you're on a pc and then command v or control v if you're on a pc to paste that original keyframe in where you are on the timeline so now if we scroll through we can see it bounces forward and then back into place and now we're going to want to make these keyframes easy ease so we can do that left click and drag over our keyframes and press function F9 and I think if you're on PC that's just F9 or it'll be control F9 so I'm just going to play this from the start and there we go we've already got a bit of a bounce what I'm actually going to do is just spread these keyframes apart a bit so it makes it a bit more fluid there we go perfect 
So now basically what you're going to want to do is just apply this to all the different letters. So let's work on the next one. So I'm going to untick the little dots so I can see the other layer. And we kind of want to animate the other one so it follows the pin of the first layer. So it all looks like it's connected. So I'm just going to scrub along the timeline, find where it starts. So that's where the second layer starts coming in. Just here you can see it emerging. So we're going to come up and I'm just going to tick the, the circle again, come to the end. And I'm just going to add the pins where I'd want some movement. So I'm going to put one at the start, put one at this corner, put one over on this little bend here, and then one at the end. So we've got our pins in place. And I'm going to untick the circle now so I can kind of try to track the pins with the other one. So there we go. I'm just going to open this all up. So again, the drop down arrow, effects, puppet, mesh one deform and then we have all our pins and if I just shift click these and then press the down arrow it can open all of them up and as you can see it's made these keyframes further along the timeline so we're just going to select all these and drag them back to where we currently are and then I'm just going to move forward a few keyframes and I'm just going to drag that first pin down so it matches the other one so that looks about right there so if we just play it now you kind of see it follows it down but it's actually we can still see it there so what I'm gonna do is just move that pin up there and I'm just gonna scrub along the timeline and just make sure it's still like in line it doesn't look like it's peeking at the bottom I'm just gonna move it a tad to the left so I can see it peeking at the right there we go perfect Awesome. And then again, you're going to want to copy that first keyframe, Command C, Command V to paste it so it goes back to its original position. So if we watch that now, you can see it goes down, comes back up, and now we can worry about the rest of the pins. So basically, you're going to want to repeat this process with all of them. I'm just going to run through the next couple, and then you can kind of get the idea for how to work the rest. So again, I'm just going to select my keyframes and just press Function F9 to make them easy to ease. And if we just watch this through so far and see how it's looking. So there we go, we've got our first bounce. Perfect. All right, so let's go on to the next one. So I'm just going to select Puppet Pin 2. And I'm going to move the keyframe to where I want it to start moving. So just move that there. Go forward a few keyframes. And I'm just going to move it so it continue up in that direction a bit more. Go forward a few more frames and then click that first keyframe, Command C, Command V, to copy it back into place. So if we just play that back, see we get a bit of a bounce there. Now that is way too quick, so I'm just going to split these keyframes, or sorry, not split them, but just drag them out so it's a bit longer. Probably go a bit longer than that actually, just so you have a nice kind of smooth motion. Now that's a bit, that's a bit too fast. I mean, yeah bit too slow even. There we go, cool. And then go on to the third one, so puppet pin 3, and I'll just find where I'd want it to, so it kind of moved downwards at that point, so I'm just going to drag the keyframe along, go forward a few frames, and just drag it down, so like that, and then just copy and paste that first keyframe. Oh, definitely not like that, let's try it again, there we go, perfect. I'm just going to drag it out just to make it a bit smoother. So there you go, we can see we've got some movement now. I'm just going to make that a bit more because it's not very noticeable. There we go. Cool. So as you can see, just by making a few movements with the puppet pin, we're really starting to bring this animation to life. And you can continue to do this and you can make as many pins or as few pins as you would like. And essentially, you're just going to keep repeating that process for all the pins, and I will get back to you when you have done that, so we can add one final bit to tie this animation together. Okay, so I've finished adding all the pins and keyframing them, and this is what I've come up with so far. So as you can see, we have a very nice bouncy animation, and we're just going to add one more thing to finish this animation off. So I'm just going to stop the preview. I'm going to select all my keyframes and then I'm going to right click and press pre-compose and I'll just name this R and what that essentially does is merges all the layers into one but if we double click the R 
it will bring us into a new composition and then we can go back to editing our layers if we need to. So I'm just going to come out of that, oh, there we go, and I'm going to find the point where the animation stops. I'm then going to go forward a few more frames, maybe to about here, I'm just going to drag this back so it stops there. I'm then going to press Command D or Control D to duplicate, and I'm then going to press the left bracket so it moves to the right hand side of where my scrubber is in the timeline. And I'm then going to right click on this duplicated layer, go up to time, time reverse layer. And now if we just play it back, so I'm just going to go up to the start of the animation, press play, and we can have a look at what that has done. So there we have it, a nice bouncy text animation and again big shout out to Austin Sailor for giving the inspiration for this tutorial, again I'm going to link him down below. And if you do make anything using this tutorial make sure to tag me in social media, I would love to see what you come up with. And yeah, thanks for watching guys and I will catch you in the next video.